How did Jesus show up to his disciples after his death and resurrection? That's what we're going to talk about today in Luke 24. Now, we're at Luke 24. This is the last chapter of Luke. Jesus, it said the first day of the week, early at dawn, the women went taking the spices that they prepared for the burial process. Jesus was put into the tomb, taken down from the cross. But now that Sabbath is over, we're ready to do the preparation. Found that the stone was rolled away. We found out that the temple structure sent guards, asked Pilate for guards. They didn't want anything to happen. They said if you know his body goes missing, what happened is going to be even worse if he, his body is stolen. So when they got there, the stone rolled away. The stone is huge. I saw in a movie, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but there was even like a wax seal, like you would seal an old fashioned letter so that there were even seals in place or ropes in place to make sure that no one tampers with anything. The stone was rolled away. Jesus' body wasn't there. They were perplexed, said that there were two men in dazzling apparel. That's going to be that bright, shiny heaven where that we talk about, where we saw in the transfiguration, where we talk about our new bodies, that they were frightened. I mean, just like the transfiguration, they all are scared to death of this kind of light. And it says, why are you seeking the living among the dead? He's not here. He has risen. They remind him, while you were still in Galilee, he told you all this. And it's true. He said this so many times. He laid out what was going to happen, when it was going to happen. What was interesting to me, and we're going to see this again in John, people believe that Jesus was the Messiah from the very beginning. And now all of a sudden they're all like, well, that awful thing just happened. They just stopped believing. The angels that were there were reminding him, all this was said to you, you should remember his words. And so then it says that coming back from the temple, they told these things to the 11 and it said to the rest too. Now, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, mother of James, and the other women told these things to the apostles. But these words, it said, sounded like, quote, idle tales. I mean, you're just talking baloney now. They didn't believe him. And so Peter ran to the tomb stooped in, and when he saw the linen cloths by themselves, he went home and marveled at what happened. So he went and checked things out and found it there. I always thought it was nice that it seemed like the linens were nicely folded. Jesus didn't just get resurrection fleeing these linens everywhere. There was one of the Bible chapters that talked about it being folded, the head cloth being folded nicely. So this is it. I mean, Jesus was resurrected. At the beginning of this entire book, Luke promised Theophilus, who means lover of God, that this is all going to happen. And now we got to the part. And so now, whether Theophilus is a real person or just a representation of someone who loves God, now they see the end. Jesus is resurrected, pointing out, you heard these things were going to happen. It happened. So now we know that it's a fulfillment of everything. Everyone who believed, and it wasn't like the women went back there believing in the resurrection. They were going to deal with his body. The apostles were devastated. They didn't believe that happened. So in the end, when we talked about who abandoned Jesus, well, Judas did. We know that. Peter denied him three times. Everyone did. Nobody believed that this was going to happen in a resurrection. Everyone's devastated. Now we know that when they found out the one you seek is resurrected, has come back to the living. It frightened the women. They didn't know what to make of it. And the women went back and were so excited to tell this that the other apostles just thought this was nonsense, I guess, is what NIV said. This is ridiculous. This is not what happened. And Peter so didn't believe it, he had to go see it from himself. And he went, he looked in and looked and saw it very much. I think and that walk back, because it says he went home, must have been a long walk back going, what just happened? Because first of all, that stone is really big. Secondly, there were guards there. Maybe there was even ropes and things to sort of seal it up. I, like I said, I don't know if that part was true or just movie stuff. But woof -da, yeah, now what? So we get to the next part where it says that there were two walking on this road that leads to Emmaus. 
which is seven miles, it says, from Jerusalem. And they were talking about what had happened. And it said Jesus drew near. So he's creeping up behind them. And their eyes were kept from recognizing them. And so Jesus was like, so what's this conversation you're having with each other? And the one who they're still, it says that they're sad. And the one named Cleopas, well, are you the only person came to Jerusalem who hasn't heard what's been going on these last two days? And she's like, oh, like, like what was happening? I'm paraphrasing. And they said, well, there was a man, Jesus from Nazareth. He was a prophet, mighty deeds and words before God chief priests and all the people came down, condemned him to death. And we hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And now it's the third day since this happened. And some of the women said they didn't even find his body and came back and saying that he was alive. And some of us went to the tomb and it was just like what the women said it was. And then Jesus says, and I love this, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all of the things the prophets have spoken, exclamation mark, was it not necessary for the Christ should suffer these things to enter into his glory? It's what God planned all along. It's the whole law, the prophets, everything that was coming to this point of when we were going to get this happening to pay for our price, to bring justice all the crimes that were done for this entire world. And you weren't paying attention. You didn't pay attention in the Jewish stuff. You didn't pay attention to what Jesus said. You are not paying attention. It made me think of when they were talking about the rich guy and the rich guy says, oh, send someone, Abraham, to tell my family about what this is. And And Abraham said, they have the law and the prophets. They have enough to believe right there. These people had something even more. They had John the Baptist as the last prophet of the Old Testament, Jesus as the fulfillment of everything in the new prophet. They had more than anyone had, and you're not getting it. We don't really know exactly where Emmaus is. There's some dispute about it. Josephus names a village. It says that it's nearly three and a half miles northwest of Jerusalem. But anyway, they were on their way walking towards Emmaus. The two disciples that were walking along the way, like I said, the name was Cleopas. Some people thought maybe it was also the same name as Clopas, whose wife Mary was also at the foot of Christ. We're going to find that out in John. Was that the person who was on the road to Emmaus? We don't find out the name of the other person, but they're sad. They're disappointed. So they got near the village and they keep walking. (laughs) I wonder if they're like completely unfazed by the things Jesus just said. It said that Jesus acted like he was going to keep walking, like he wasn't stopping off at Emmaus. And they're like, no, 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 come with us. Stay with us for the evening. The day's over. You can have food with us and we'll break bread. And when he took the bread and blessed it and gave it to them, it says their eyes were open. You think about how you have the prayer over bread in Judaism, and then you had the feeding of the 5,000, and you had the many feedings in our walk towards Jerusalem, and it broke the bread, take and eat. And when they saw this again, it said suddenly they saw it. They recognized him, and then he vanished. Hearts burned within us, they said. He opened us to scripture, and they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. So they just got up and went back to Jerusalem, found the 11 apostles, and told them what happened. The Lord is risen. He appeared to Simon. And they told him what happened on the road and how he was breaking the bread with them. Yeah, so and that this is the passage where people will say, the, Jesus has risen, and it says, he has risen indeed. This is where we get it. In this chapter 24, verse 34, the Lord has risen indeed. This is part of almost every Easter service that we have. We always talk about this. He has risen indeed. This is the main crux of everything Christianity goes on, that not just that Jesus was born, not just that he died, not just that he preached and taught people, not just that he died, but that he was risen indeed. So then Jesus went and appeared to his disciples. Peace to you, because they said they were frightened, because I would be frightened, wouldn't you be frightened, if you thought you saw your stricken Lord 
They said they thought he saw a spirit. This is a ghost. Why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Jesus always sees the heart. So he shows him his hands, his feet, touch it. Spirits don't have flesh. He showed him his hands and his feet and he ate with them, broiled fish, because spirits don't eat. There was a philosophy in the Greek culture that anything physical was bad. It led to sexual immorality, that basically the flesh is evil, but spiritual is all good. And so a lot of these people believe that Jesus was never in the flesh. He was always a spirit. And certainly when he comes back from the dead, he is spirit. Jesus is fighting of that. He's like, touch me. Look at this. Let's have fish. These are all things that not spirits do. He said that, you know, I had to do this so that, you know, the law, the prophets, the Psalms, all this has to be fulfilled. And he It says, open their mind to understand the scripture. Quote, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and repentance for the forgiveness of sin should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are the witnesses to these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with the power from on high. This is going to be the coming of the Holy Spirit. So stay here. You're going to get the thing I promised, which is going to be the Holy Spirit. We saw in the Old Testament, we saw in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon people. The Holy Spirit traveled here and there. Now the Holy Spirit is with us all the time. He is a part of us. And this is what Jesus promised us. This is all to fulfill everything that has always been written. And not only that, I am sending you out. Just like he sent the 72, he sent the apostles before. Now you're going to tell everybody about this. I think it's kind of interesting because a lot of times when you hear about people, why did Jesus go to some podunk area of the world? You know, he could have shown himself to Rome, the center of the world kind of at that time, the empire. There's things that he could have done to make himself more known. But he is at the crossroads. This is the fulfillment of the Jewish faith. So we are in the Jewish temple. We're in the Jewish headquarters. We are with the Jewish people who he said he had to talk to first. We're going to go out. We're going to go to the far ends of the east. We're going to go to the far ends of the west. We're going to go to the Roman headquarters. and. Christianity, Jesus, is what ate the Roman Empire. The Greek Empire was already eaten by it, so now we have basically taken those two. This was a way to get the message out to everybody. I think Jesus stays with them for 40 days. Remember the 40 days? We were 40 years in the desert. We were 40 days in the desert fasting where it led to his temptation. 40 is that term for A duration of time. Usually it tends to be a challenging time, but Jesus goes back up after 40 days. Says that he led them out as far as Bethany, that was two miles, I think, away, lifted up his hands, blessed them, and was carried up into heaven. They worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem, it says, with great joy. They were continually in the temple, blessing God. I think it's interesting too, because we know now. The temple is no longer the place where you have to worship God. But it's something that they're used to. But I think that any sign that you worship God, whether it's in the temple, where it's outside the temple, that's what's important. But they knew that the temple is where they were going to praise God and thank God for everything that happened. And that ends Luke, the entire thing. Boy, what am I not going to meditate on? But What I'm going to meditate on in this particular case is how Jesus felt it was important not just to be resurrected. He could just say, ta-da, I did the thing I was supposed to do. But no, he wanted to minister to his apostles. He wanted to be there for his people. He wanted to show them his hands. He ate with them. He taught with them. He opened up their minds. He told them what was going to happen next and what they should do next. What? And what I'm going to pray about this week is 
recognizing the word of God. The people at Emmaus, and they were hidden from recognizing Jesus. But I think, too, they didn't necessarily recognize what Jesus said to them about, hey, this was all supposed to happen, right? And it wasn't until they broke bread. That's when they finally recognized Jesus. It took something more monumental. But my prayer is that when I hear the word of God, when I hear the message of Christ, it will burn in my heart right right then and there. Boy. And what I'm going to share with other people is that Jesus set everyone out to tell everybody, this is going to start in Jerusalem and we are going to go everywhere to every corner of the earth and tell everybody. Look at it now. I mean, I know people talk about the faith and where it's at right now and the hits it took during the pandemic and how how a generation of people separated themselves from the church. Jesus is at every corner, all over throughout the entire earth. This message came to a very small group of people outside of the city of Jerusalem 2,000 years ago, and that message got everywhere. And we are supposed to continually bring that message out We are now the disciples meant to tell everyone from every nation. Everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. We are going to start John. Boy, it's going to be trippy. I'm telling you now, I already wrote the show notes for it. Wow. Pray for me because John is going to be harder, I think, than the other ones to talk about, even though the passages so far are not as long. But pray for me that I do a great job in conveying the message of John. And I hope you're reading along with me. Again, we have the Notion database. There are many tools online, which I provided in the show notes as well. I hope that this is giving you some aid in this read along of the entire Bible so that we can, as mere lay people, not trained scholars, see what we can get out of the Bible, what we can learn about the Bible. I was listening uh, to a podcast earlier and they were going through word by word and the Greek word here and this word there. And I thought, I get that. I mean, I do totally get that. But there's like the message of us having a fresh reading of it. Then there's the message of people doing word for word and study for study. We're just trying to get the message of it. We're looking at it as mere people. What's our first reaction? Just like in the Bible in Small Steps, I talked about how to do an inductive Bible study. We could do a lot deeper dive, but the idea is that we're going to get the main message, the main meat out of everything that we're reading. All right, everyone, have a great day.